Namaskar and welcome to New India Junction. I am Shivani and a new postcard has arrived today from an ancient time. Let's take a deep dive into India's glorious past. Let's take a look at India, the cradle of civilizational, cultural and academic knowledge since time immemorial. Let's travel back in time to understand more about the priceless and invaluable contributions that India has made over these many years. Almost 3000 years ago, during the 1000 to 600 BC period, India was making huge strides in the field of medicine and anatomical sciences. How do we know this? Well, through masterpieces like the Charaka and Sushruta Samhita. These ancient texts, even after the modern day advances, continue to be one of the most comprehensive and diverse repositories of medicinal knowledge. In the absence of any diagnostic tests or molecular analysis, it was only through constant practice that we developed such an extensive knowledge base for even the most complicated of procedures. Did you know the Sushruta Samhita created by Rishi Sushruta sometime around 600 BC contains information regarding 1120 medical conditions? It details surgical procedures, even those as complex as plastic surgery, nose surgery, eye surgery, but that's a well-known fact. The more astonishing part are the chapters dedicated to congenital disorders, that is the problems faced by infants and babies. Can you imagine how difficult it must have been to understand and document a science that even today remains somewhat complicated? Can you imagine the unbelievable level of intellect and practice that it took to pinpoint some of mankind's existential problems millennia before the world finally caught up? That's not all. The Charaka Samhita created by Rishi Charaka is one of the oldest and authoritative writings on Ayurveda. Interestingly, the Charaka Samhita not only contains the process of treatment it details the philosophy behind the entire concept of the Ayurvedic system of medicine. This text too classifies the sciences broadly into multiple chapters including pediatrics, toxicology, mental health and even reproductive medicine. While Rishi Sushruta was an ardent devotee of the god of medicinal sciences, particularly Ayurveda, Dhanvantri, an avatar of Lord Vishnu. Rishi Charaka followed the millennia-old doctrine of the Atreya school of thought, started by Maharishi Punarvasu Atreya. Rishi Sushruta, today regarded as the father of surgery, established a school for medical sciences in Varanasi. Now here's the best part. Even in those ancient times, medicinal knowledge was never considered a subject reserved for any particular class. The doors of Rishi Sushruta's school were open for all those who wish to pursue medicine. Isn't that great? Similarly, through the Charaka Samhita, the science of internal medicine was made available to students across ancient India. Many practices like the study of life energies or doshas and the need to balance them for a healthier life are followed by Ayurvedic practitioners even today. Such was their precision and such was their practicality. These schools of thought, surgery and internal medicine form the basis of almost all medical treatments today. Compiled in the form of texts, this knowledge made its way to faraway lands as well, paving the way for the worldwide development of medical sciences. The Arabic translations Kitab Shah Shun Al Hindi and Kitab Susurud, the European translations in Latin by Hessler and in German by Muller in the early 19th century, attest to the relevance of India's ancient sciences. In the same light, many credit the relation between geography and medicine to have originated sometime around Hippocrates' existence, but the Charaka Samhita, written centuries before him, carefully considers the impact of geographical locations, 
be in the dietary habit of people residing at a particular place, the seasons or the medicinal plants available in the vicinity. Based on the same logic, don't you realize that our dietary regimen also changes with changing seasons? Lighter and easier to digest food in summers, whereas more fatty foods in the winter. In similar regard, many Indian sciences have been taken for granted and pushed to the background. Their modern versions and Western interpretations are many a times considered supreme. Why? Why is that? Isn't that a question to ask? But it is heartening to note that today we are looking at a resurgence of sorts with the creation of ministries like Ayush and the positive results of lifestyle changes based on Vedic techniques, India's magnificent past is being slowly pieced back together. This knowledge that has stood the test of time has proven to be beneficial millennia after it was first documented. Even today, our country seems to be following the same principles of coexistence and development for all, be it sharing our knowledge of the pandemic or the means to fight it with the whole world. The development of co-vaccine and indigenous vaccination for COVID-19 pandemic by Bharat Biotech was the latest feat accomplished by Indian medical researchers. India's co-vaccine shows high efficacy against COVID-19 infections in phase 3 trial and I quote a vaccine that was authorized by the Indian government ahead of phase 3 trials now shows promising results making co-vaccine a potentially valuable addition to the global armory of vaccines against COVID-19, a quote by Linda Geddes on 6 July. Outside of India, Covaxin has also been approved for emergency use in 15 countries, including Iran, Zimbabwe, Mexico, the Philippines, Guatemala, and Botswana. Bharat Biotech has also signed deals with the US-based biopharmaceutical company Ocugen to produce the vaccine for the North American market. It is therefore about time that we Indians who have inherited this boundless knowledge recognize and celebrate our heritage, our culture, our country and its glorious history. It is time that our immense knowledge from ancient times begins to shape the new India. Dhanyavad and Namaskar.